friends, Convocation June 2022 is about to begin. For all of our guests in Convocation Mall, please listen closely to a few important announcements for your enjoyment and safety during the ceremony. During the ceremony, guests should remain seated and keep the aisleways clear. This is required by fire regulation. In the case of an emergency evacuation, follow the directions of event personnel to the assembly point, which is located down the stairs behind you on the track and field outside the gym. Please proceed slowly and carefully. Those with accessibility needs should proceed to the Halpern Center, located northeast of Convocation Mall. The weather today is perfect for convocation. There is a water station outside of Maggie Benston Center, which is on your right, and reusable water bottles are available for purchase at the Spirit Shop in the Diamond Family Auditorium, which is on your right if you forgot yours. In consideration of other guests, we ask that you refrain from conversation during the ceremony and please put cell phones on uh, silent. For those near and afar, we encourage you to share your photos and messages on social media using hashtag MySFUGrad. If you're able, please rise for the academic procession.
OCM. Thank you. Aichka! Aichka, OCM. Eskaktas Pakwos, the title of that song, translates to gathering of eagles. As we are gathered in that spirit, the eagle, of course, is uh, able to go to those places high above the clouds and have conversations with the Creator. And also, the eagle gives us that uh, noble spirit and that spirit of um, leadership, of getting things done. That's what that song is about in tribute to all of us who are gathered here today, gathered in that spirit of the eagle. So I thank you for this opportunity. Anhat Tamakutsi OCM. Anhat and Squawin, Quis Clay Gay, Quichnomi, Tinoyapin, and Siayite to Squiles to Seats. I'm really glad and welcome you today that you all came here today, Kayacht and welcome to the unceded ancestral traditional territories of the Skohopmish Ochemeok, Squamish Nation, Slaywatooth, Coquitlam, and Musqueam First Nations. It's an honor to be here, Sequalia Kwashaman Sna. My name is Sequalia, also known as Ann Wanick. I'm from the Squamish Nation, and so are, are my family here who sang us in. And I'd like to um, just share that our, my grandfather and Coast Salish Longhouse elders always say, taught me we have an inner energy, a force within us. And I think today we all need to calm our inner energy and we receive from Creator through the top of our heads into our energy. We can send our energy to each other and receive from each other. And you can't have your hands like this, this, or this. And it's that inner energy, the force, why I'm a Star Wars fan and have baby Grogu on today. <laughs> And, um, you know, because it's the same as my grandfather and elders said, we have that energy. So now we're going to do Tai Chi and yoga exercises. And you're going to do the downward dog or standing tree. I'm teasing. The elders say laughter is medicine, and that's to make you relax. Open your hands. Put them by your side. Breathe in and get grounded. Say prayers for each other while I sing part of Sequalia Slolem, Aunt Sally's song, Greeting of the Day, Sequalia, my namesake. So unfold your hands. If I see you put them together or do this, I'm going to come use you as my drum. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Pray for each other and your families, friends, and also for the one who had a um, health issue. Say prayers for their wellness and healing and recovery. And pray for all the graduates who are here. And um, I graduated last year. I'm an alumni of SFU from the MBA, um, Indigenous Business and Leadership at um, Beatty School of Business. So today's your day to fly like an eagle, like my cousin said, and um, not have to worry about research, paper deadlines, waiting for grades, waiting for the result at the end of the term. You did it and you're here. So this day is for you to celebrate all of you. So let's come together in Chomo and Shkwawin, one heart and one mind. Chen Chen Stwite to stand and work together to hold each other up and support one another with our prayers for each other and all our family, friends, and communities.
Quen Quenmentomi Kakakanak Chase Yam Yons Yon So Tinoyop and Man Man Squawin to Squiles Deceits, asking you, Creator, to watch over all your children gathered here today and all their family, friends, and the villages where they're from and where they now live, work, and play. Put a shield of protection of safety around each of them. Help all of them with their squawin, the feelings in their hearts and minds their emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual health and well-being. Asking you, Creator, to watch over all our families and friends, and also to um, let today be a yet one halt its up. An excellent work today as we celebrate the students and also celebrate all of their families who have stood behind them and held them up to get them to this place where they are today. So as creator, help all the students to turn around and look at their family and saw who was holding them up and brought them to this place today and be grateful and thank them. And let us have a beautiful day together in celebration of all of you. Tuma Quitsi Snechum, those are my words. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, please be seated. Thank you for sharing that warm welcome, Elder Sequalia. Elder Sequalia, as she said, is a member of the Squamish Nation and of the SFU Elders Program. I'd also like to take this moment to pay my respects to Elder Sequalia and to other elders past and present. Thank you also to Eagle Song from the Squamish Nation and the members of the world famous SFU Pipe Band for opening our ceremony in a good way. Please join me in thanking them. It's an honor to be here today on the traditional and unceded and continuously occupied territories of the Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, Musqueam, Quiquitlam peoples. You know, as a native English speaker, I speak indigenous languages as they became endangered and outlawed by successive governments in the past century. I speak these languages today to contribute to the revival and to enhance our collective learning. The shared territory on which our university sits, there are two indigenous languages. I recognize the Hunkamimim and Squamish-speaking peoples that have been in relationship with this land since time immemorial. And the place names they use are linked to activities or the surroundings of this special place. We're privileged to gather here on what is now known as Burnaby Mountain, but what was first known as Tlaklakwetan by the Squamish people, which means where the arbutus bark gets peeled in the spring. And Saltooth is the Tsleil-Waututh place name for Burnaby Mountain. The motives on the regalia that President Johnson and I are wearing today were selected by Squamish hereditary chief Janice George and Willie Butter, Buddy Joseph. The motives represent First Peoples and the food harvested right here on Burnaby Mountain. We're both deeply honored to wear this regalia as SFU and in fact our entire country continue on our paths towards Indigenous reconciliation. I'd now like to invite Mr. Tristiano Coppola, who is a fourth year student in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences and a current member of the SFU choir to lead us in the singing of O Canada. For those of you in Convocation Mall and online, please rise if you are able and join us in the singing of our national anthem. Oh, Canada. Our home and native land, true patriot love, 
in all of us command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Thank you so much. We have such talented members of our SFU community. Please be seated. I declare convocation assembled for the granting of degrees. Madam President, members of the Board of Governors and Senate faculty, honored guests, graduates, and friends, my name is Tamara Vrooman, and I am the Chancellor of Simon Fraser University. We're delighted and honored to have you join us for convocation. I'm not sure after the past few years I'll ever get tired of seeing so many smiling faces uh, in the audience without masks. And on a day like today, there's truly no better be place to be than right up here on Burnaby Mountain at SFU. In attendance today are a number of distinguished guests in the audience and on the platform, including members of Senate, vice presidents, deans, and faculty. I'd like to acknowledge Dr. Jack Blaney, President Emeritus and Honorary Degree Recipient. <laughs> President Emeritus Andrew Petter, who we conferred an Honorary Doctorate of Laws this morning. Anka Kessler, a member of SFU's Board of Governors. Board Chair Emeriti, Bill Cunningham, and Jamie Stewart. They're both here. And a special welcome to all of you here in Convocation Mall, and those of you who continue to join us online. Please let us know where you're watching from uh, in the chat. Honored guests, President Johnton, it is so wonderful to see your smiling faces here together. And graduates, well, you did it. You must be so proud. I know I am. I'm also inspired. This has been a challenging time in which to study, to graduate, and not the least of which, to plan for the future. But today, I don't want to dwell on what you had to do and endure to get here. Let's just say the world threw more than a few obstacles in your way. But you persevered. And now, after years of hard work, you join a long line of SFU graduates who have shaped this university and indeed our wider world. We owe you and all those who helped you get along the way a huge debt of gratitude. When I was in university, I majored in history, and I see today that my professor, Dr. Eric Sager, is sitting in the audience. So that's a lesson to you. You never know when you're going to meet your former professors. I loved it. It really helped me to make sense of things, why things were the way they were or why they weren't. I was also tremendously inspired by the hard work creativity and compassion of people and the times that I studied. I was inspired by their example of what it really takes to succeed. It motivated me to think of my own role in creating a better future for myself, my community, and my country. Back then, I won't say precisely how long, but suffice to say, slightly more than 30 years ago, BC was a very different place. Almost a million fewer people lived in Greater Vancouver. The last residential school had only been closed for a few years. 
Same-sex couples were not allowed civil unions, much less a marriage license. There wasn't, and at that time never had been, a Chinese-Canadian member of BC's legislature. And the Vancouver Club had just started admitting women. It's hard to believe. And finally, the Canucks hadn't yet become the Stanley Cup dynasty that they are today. No, wait, <laughs> that hasn't changed. My point is simple. At times, the world can look pretty messed up. Sometimes the challenges of the present can feel daunting, making it difficult to imagine a clear and better path to the future. This is not a new feeling. I know from my studies that at many times throughout history, other generations have felt the same way. And that idea gives me comfort in these difficult times. And I hope as you embark on your future, it gives you comfort as well. Because when you put it into historical perspective, there's a lot to celebrate. And you, the class of 2022, reflect so much about what is changing for the better. You are probably singularly the most diverse, engaged, and connected SFU graduates in our university's history. Simon Fraser University is more inclusive, more sustainable, and more innovative because of you. You pushed us to confront the biggest challenges of our time, from climate change to the legacy of colonialism. You fought for better mental health care, more housing, and improved public transit and generations of students will have you to thank for shortening their commute on the way to Burnaby Mountain via a gondola. You helped build new businesses and bring new ideas to market. You created astounding and beautiful and important works of art, poetry, and literature. You joined in a battle against a pandemic to help protect public health, whether through co-ops, volunteer work, or by looking out for those around you. And you participated in an academic community committed to open inquiry and the free exchange of ideas. At the time of, a time of disinformation and increased polarization, the values you learned and applied here surely must endure. Graduates, you wrote your own chapter in SFU's story and history. And I'm here to tell you today, I'm confident it is a very good one. And now, you will go on to write new ones. Looking out at all of you, I have enormous confidence in you. Your generation will do great things. And as you do so, I want you to know that you will always belong to the ever-growing SFU family, made up of people from all walks of life and every part of the world, connected together by this extraordinary institution. So as you leave this ceremony today to celebrate your achievement, know that you are always welcome back. On behalf of everyone at Simon Fraser University, faculty, staff, alumni, students, and supporters, our heartfelt congratulations. It is now my pleasure to call upon the president of our university, Dr. Joy Johnson, for her address. President Johnson. Madam Chancellor, it is indeed a privilege to stand before you today on the traditional unceded territories of the Squamish, the Tsleil-Waututh, the Coquitlam, and the Musqueam peoples. And as a settler on these lands, I recognize a responsibility to address and repair relations with Indigenous peoples whose lands we occupy. And acknowledging this is an important first step towards reconciliation. I want to begin by welcoming all of the parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and loved ones who have joined us today. And I'd like to extend a big welcome to graduates who are here today, and I want to extend my best wishes to those who couldn't join us as well. You are just incredible. Your spirit, 
your resilience, your dogged determination has reminded us all once again why we do the work that we do and why education and knowledge matter so much to our lives and to our world. I'm really grateful to the Chancellor Vrooman for giving us some historical perspective today. And she's right. We have come a long way. At the same time, we have many challenges still to face. An ongoing global pandemic, racial injustice, democracy threatened in Ukraine and around the world. And yet, here we are, grateful to gather together in person, grateful to celebrate the SFU community and each person who is a part of it. It really is a tribute to the power of education to change lives and build community. At university, we work hard, very hard, to earn a credential. It's an enormous personal accomplishment. And so you should be very, very proud. I trust that what you have studied at SFU will help you find successful and fulfilling careers. All of the evidence suggests that it will. What you've learned at university is in high demand right across our economy. But as important as that is, and it is very important, I also hope for something more. I hope that your time here has nurtured within you a sense of belonging, of common purpose, and of community. Think about it. When you applied to SFU, you did so on your own, at your own computer. One individual among many thousands hoping to get accepted at SFU. Today, you graduate from SFU in communion with many of those same people, fellow graduates with a shared experience and with the tools that you need to play a part in healing, repairing, and engaging the world. Over my life as a researcher, a teacher, and a university administrator, I have seen this awakening time and time again, never more so than in the last two years of real hardship and sacrifice, never more so than here at SFU. And I want to give you an example. Last month, we had our welcome back ceremonies for graduates who couldn't attend convocation on, uh, uh, in person and did so online due to COVID-19. On May the 5th, I shook the hands of hundreds of grads as they finally crossed the stage in person. I stood up on stage and gave an address, just like I'm doing right now, and at the same time, in the Student Union building, just over there, members of the SFU Indigenous Student Center and SFU First Nations Métis and Inuit Student Association had a table set up to share information and resources around the National Day of Awareness for Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women, Girls, and Two-Spirit People. I felt so privileged that on that day, we were celebrating the work of our graduates who were doing incredible work in the world and also at the same time witnessing SFU students doing this important healing and educational work for, for and within the SFU community. I want to take a moment today to say thank you to our Indigenous Student Centre and the First Nations, Métis and Inuit Student Association for their work in supporting Indigenous students at Simon Fraser University. Of course, that's only one example among many I'm inspired by the many projects submitted by students to the SFU Community Engagement Competition. Projects like Art for Comfort, which brings people together to create a virtual quilt that holds community memories and hopes and dreams. And the BC Newcomer Camp, which aims to provide free educational programs to help refugees adjust to their new homes. I'm inspired by the countless acts of kindness and empathy I see in our community each day, by the work of SFU staff and faculty who are so dedicated to creating a vibrant student learning experience. To put it simply, seeing all of you today, seeing the impact you've made on our community, and knowing the impact that you will make on the world, that makes our challenges feel small. It gives me hope. It inspires me like nothing else. And so, from the bottom of my heart and on behalf of everyone here at SFU, thank you and congratulations.
Thank you very much, President Johnson. SFU's honorary degree is the highest honor conferred by our university. Degrees are awarded to distinguished individuals in recognition of their scholarly, scientific, or artistic achievement, or in recognition of exceptional contribution to the public good through professional or philanthropic activity. Their achievements celebrate our university's values and serve as an inspiration to many. They are role models to our students, graduates, alumni, and our broader community. The honorary degree will now be conferred. To present the honorary degree candidate, Professor Andrew Petter, I'm pleased to welcome Dr. Joanne Curry. Joanne Curry is SFU's Vice President External Relations and has made a career of advancing post-secondary education and connecting the university with community, government, and business. She led the establishment of Simon Fraser University's Surrey campus in 2002 as its initial executive director. Joanne holds a doctorate in business from the University of Bath in the United Kingdom and is a proud alumnus of SFU with a master's degree in business administration. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Curry. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, it is my honor to present to you Andrew Petter, well known to this community as President Emeritus of Simon Fraser University. A leader in academia, law, and politics, Professor Petter has had a profound impact on post-secondary education, public policy, and community life in British Columbia and beyond. Born in Victoria and raised in the Kootenays, Andrew's teenage stint as a talk show host fueled his taste for politics, and at age 19, he launched a career in public service, working in the NDP government of Dave Barrett. He paused along the path to earn law degrees from the University of Victoria and Cambridge University, to practice law in Saskatchewan, and to assume teaching positions at York University and the University of Victoria. In the 1990s, Andrew found his way back to government, serving two terms as a provincial MLA and cabinet minister with numerous portfolios. He worked to advance reconciliation, strengthen environmental policies, expand post-secondary education, and promote human rights. He also built the much-loved Galloping Goose Trail system in Victoria. Returning to UVic Law as Dean in 2000, Andrew helped to establish the school as a trailblazer in Indigenous legal education. He joined SFU as president in 2010, spearheading the development and implementation of our strategic vision to be Canada's engaged university. Under his leadership, SFU increased community-based learning, university-wide innovation, strengthened its support for reconciliation and environmental sustainability, and significantly expanded all three of its campuses. He oversaw the creation of SFU Public Square and other initiatives that gained SFU international recognition for its commitments to dialogue and community engagement. In addition to being named Canada's top comprehensive university by Maclean's magazine for nine of his ten presidential terms, presidential years rather, uh, SFU was ranked first in the world in 2020 by Times Higher Education for its positive impact on sustainable cities and communities. Andrew has received many honours, ranging from Public Policy Forum's Peter Lougheed Award for Leadership in Public Policy, to Queen's Council to Honorary Citizenship in the City of Victoria. He was admitted to the Order of Canada and Order of BC in recognition of his contributions to public policy, education, and community engagement. Madam Chancellor, Andrew Petter has lived a life in service to the greater good, guided by an abiding faith in the power of public institutions to promote transformative change. Our university, indeed our province and country, 
owe him a debt of gratitude. In token, I ask that you now confer upon him the degree of Doctors of Laws Honoris Causa. Andrew Petter. <laughs> By virtue of the authority vested in me and in the Senate of this university, I hereby admit you to the degree of Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa. Andrew Petter will be hooded by Dr. Catherine Deverne, Vice President Academic and Provost, and Mr. Tom Nault, University Registrar, Executive Director, Student Enrollment. It is now with pleasure that I call upon Dr. Andrew Petter to deliver the convocation address. Give me a hug first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Chancellor, Madam President, members of the Board of Governors and Senate, faculty members, staff, and most especially, graduates, family, and friends. I too am honored to join you on the traditional unceded territory of the Musqueam, the Squamish, the Tsleil-Waututh, and Coquitlam peoples. And I'm thrilled to be a member of Simon Fraser University's 2022 graduating class. You and I have had the privilege of being part of the SFU community, and today we share the added distinction of being conferred a degree from this wonderful institution. Of course, mine is purely honorary. Yours is well and truly earned. So let me start by congratulating you on this remarkable achievement and expressing my appreciation to the family, friends, and faculty members who helped and supported you on your journey. They are as proud of you as you should be of yourselves. Now, the responsibility of an honorary degree recipient, as I understand it, is to identify some challenges, share some insights, and offer some words of encouragement for the benefit of the graduating class and to do all this in five minutes or less. A short order in terms of time, it's a tall order in terms of ambition. However, I'll do my best, starting with the challenges. There are many that command our attention, from widening social and economic inequality to the existential threat of climate change. The challenge I'll focus on today, however, is one that I see as a precondition to our collective capacity to address all others and that's the challenge of maintaining freedom and democracy. Now let me start by acknowledging that the meanings of freedom and democracy are contested. For some, freedom simply means the right to be left to one's own devices, and democracy means no more than the, the ability to cast a ballot every few years. I take a more expansive view. Freedom and democracy in my lexicon express the instinct we share to have agency over the direction of our lives and our communities. When democracy is constrained, so too is our freedom. And when our freedoms are limited, so too are the horizons of our democratic imagination. So it is that the greatest struggles for freedom have expanded the democratic franchise and advanced justice within the community. Think of the civil rights movement in the United States, the solidarity movement in Soviet-era Poland, and the anti-apartheid movement in South Africa or here at home, the centuries-long struggle of indigenous peoples. This history is important because it reminds us that freedom and democracy are not granted to us from on high, nor are they self-perpetuating. They must continuously be fought for and, safeguard and safeguarded from those who would diminish them or take them away. You need only look for a reminder to the people of Ukraine who are waging an extraordinary battle against Russian imperialism in order to preserve their rights to determine their own destiny, to maintain their freedom, to preserve their democracy. 
We in Canada are fortunate to live in a country in which freedom and democracy, while practiced imperfectly, are still regarded as core values. But that does not mean that we can afford to take them for granted. Voter turnout in this country is falling, particularly amongst younger voters. At the same time, anti-democratic sentiment is on the rise, and according to recent polling, Canadians' faith in democratic institutions is in decline. South of the border, democratic traditions are under sustained attack from those who wish to roll back voting rights, subvert elections, and manipulate the courts. And around the world, many believe we are approaching democracy's twilight. As disturbing as these trends are, I remain optimistic. Democracies are more resilient than they're often assumed to be, and freedom retains a powerful hold on the human spirit. Just look how much the people of Ukraine have been willing to sacrifice, and the enormous support that their cause has gained around the globe. Their bravery and the response it has generated remind us how cherished these values are and how far people will go to defend them. They also remind us that at this moment in history, the responsibilities that accompany democratic citizenship have never been greater, at home as well as abroad. The best way we can discharge these responsibilities is by nurturing and practicing them in our everyday lives. As community activist Saul Alinsky once observed, the price of democracy is the ongoing pursuit of the common good. The people of Ukraine regard that pursuit as a privilege rather than a burden, and so should we. Now, as graduates of Canada's engaged university, you are well equipped to be leaders in this effort. Your education at SFU has given you an appreciation of how the freedom to express oneself openly and to question others without fear advances the search for truth and shared meaning. Defend that freedom. Being part of a university in which students' voices matter, the first university in Canada to have student representation on its Senate, has, I hope, given you a sense of your power and agency to influence public policy on issues such as climate change, public education, and social justice. Keep up the fight. And SFU's commitment to community engagement and the opportunities it has provided you to gain experience and understanding of the world around you have, I trust, prepared you to be engaged citizens committed to the pursuit of the common good. So please, stay engaged. Serve your community however you can, in whatever path you choose. Do these things and you will help to advance freedom and defend democracy for today and for generations to follow. In this spirit, I'd like to leave you with an anthem that has inspired me in my journey and I hope might encourage you in yours. It was recorded some time ago by Judy Collins to honor the long, hard struggle of North American workers to secure democratic labor rights. It's called Pass It On, and you'll have to forgive me my singing voice. I am no Judy Collins. <laughs> Freedom doesn't come like a bird on the wing. It doesn't come down like the summer rain. Freedom, freedom is a hard one thing. You've got to work for it, fight for it, day and night for it. And every generation's got to win it again. Pass it on to your children, mother. Pass it on to your children, brother. You've got to work for it, fight for it, day and night for it. Pass it on to your children. Pass it on. My congratulations to you all. Thank you very much, Dr. Petter, uh, for your inspiring words and reminding us about the importance of freedom. And in particular, thank you very much for ending in song. Wonderful. Uh, as part of our convocation, the Alumni Association will present a Simon Fraser University alumni pin to graduates after they leave the stage. Our alumni are incredibly important to us, and we are pleased that this symbolic presentation will launch you on your new role as alumni of SFU.
Mr. Thomas DeMello graduated from SFU in 2009 with a bachelor's degree in economics. He is currently a portfolio manager and investment advisor with RBC Wealth Management, where his team assists high net worth clients with financial planning and investment management. I invite Thomas to the lectern to bring greetings to the graduates. Thomas. Thank you, President Johnson, and uh, good morning to SFU's newest alumni. Today, your relationship with SFU evolves. You are now officially members of SFU's alumni community, a community of change makers, problem solvers, leaders, collaborators, and industrious alumni around the globe. Wherever you go, SFU alumni will be cheering you on. Staying connected to SFU provides you with opportunities to learn, grow and thrive through local, national, and international events, career resources, library services, and many other value-added benefits. As alumni, you now serve as ambassadors for SFU in your community. Through your journey, you also inspire current and future students to dream, to strive for excellence, and to make their own mark on the world. Please stay connected to SFU alumni. We want to hear from you and have a chance to celebrate your successes. As you cross the stage today and receive your alumni pin, be proud of your accomplishments and everything that it took to be in this moment. Thank you for all your time, your energy, and your talents in this great university. I hope you can join us at the faculty and alumni celebration reception that follows today's ceremony up by the AQ Pond. Congratulations again, and welcome to SFU's global community of alumni. Thank you very much, Thomas. Before the graduates are presented individually to the Chancellor, Ms. Kelly Finney, a member of the graduating class, will provide the graduation address. Kelly Finney has presented her research at Had Kill, uh, Language of the Haida Peoples, at national and international conferences, and was a finalist at S in SFU's three-minute thesis competition. She also served as the president of the Linguistics Student Association and as an elected executive for the Teaching Support Staff Union. Kelly is continuing her work with Chad Kill uh, as a postdoctoral uh, associate. I'm now pleased to call upon Ms. Finney. Thank you, President Johnson, Madam Chancellor, esteemed guests, faculty, staff, graduates, family, and friends. I am humbled and honored to be speaking with you today. With the few short minutes that I have, I'd like to talk to you about what stands out to me the most when looking back on my time at SFU, the people that I've met and the relationships that I've formed. When I came to SFU, I was, of course, excited to begin my studies, and excited for the opportunity to work toward a PhD. However, I was also apprehensive. I was moving to a new city and a new country where I didn't know anyone. As someone who was quite happy in my own company, the thought of meeting new people, going through the endless, banal, getting to know you chit chat, what are you studying? Where are you from? Why did you come to SFU? was exhausting. Yet, I also knew that getting to know other people, albeit challenging, was crucial. So I pushed myself to attend orientations and social events, to play icebreakers, if only to have a response to my dad's weekly question, what did you do for fun? Getting to know people and gradually developing relationships helped me build a connection to the university community. For me, this took the form of involvement with the Teaching Support Staff Union, my department's Graduate Student Association, and work as a teaching assistant. I went from being encouraged to attend meetings and events to inviting others to do so, reciprocating the same welcome that I had experienced when I was the new face. I went from being overwhelmed by many new student faces, nervous to be a teaching assistant for the first time, 
to feeling proud when I saw many of my students cross this very stage. And my once solitary anonymous walks across campus to clear my thoughts were now opportunities to see familiar faces and stop and chat. I hope that all of you, graduates, experience some of this sense of community during your time here, perhaps through involvement with a club, student society, or maybe even just through beginning to recognize people and places on campus. Establishing, establishing this connection to the university community is what helped me to persevere during the difficult times, the times when I questioned why I was here, the many, many, many times I thought about giving up and just curling up in a ball and hiding. The more people that I met who I told about my work, the more people I became accountable to. There is no better example of this than my research. This work developed from a relationship with my supervisor, Marianne Ignace, who trusted me enough to introduce me to Haida Elder Lawrence Bell. What started as sporadic work sessions turned into weekly meetings where we transcribed and translated recordings. Lawrence brought these recordings to life as he shared recollections of the individuals we listened to, many of whom have since passed away, and his own experiences. The more we worked together, the more responsibility I felt for doing this work in a good way, in a way that would reciprocate the level of trust that Lawrence had placed in me. The work then became as much, if not more, about our relationship. And I'd like to think that this focus on relationship, of being accountable to Lawrence, resulted in a better finished thesis. So now, graduates, as you reflect on your time at SFU, I'd urge you to think of those who helped to support you on your academic journey and those who held you accountable. Perhaps this was a parent or a friend uh, checking in with you, asking how projects were going. Maybe it was coffee break colleagues or a workout buddy. It could even be the person that you saw at the same time every day in the library whose name you never knew, but with whom you always exchanged a smile and a nod recognizing that you were both experiencing a similar student journey. No matter who it was, know that these people, as much as, if not more so than any of us, are the reason that we are here today in Convocation Mall and the reason folks all around the world are gathered virtually. Yes, absolutely, Convocation is a time for each of us to celebrate our achievements. These took hard work, dedication, and sacrifice, and are a major accomplishment. But Convocation is also an opportunity to thank the many, many people who contributed to that accomplishment and to recognize their sacrifices for us and their dedication to us. It's also an opportunity to reflect on how, as we leave the SFU community, we might all be better at being in relationship with those around us. Thank you again, and congratulations to my fellow graduates and the friends, family, colleagues, and mentors who supported us guided us, challenged us, and now celebrate with us in our achievement. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kelly. Thanks for reminding us about the importance of community, relationships, but also particularly thank you for the incredible work that you are doing. The members of the graduating class will now be presented to the chancellor to be admitted en masse to their degrees. Will the graduates please rise if you are able? Yeah. Madam Chancellor, I present to you those scholars who have fulfilled the statutory requirements laid down by the Senate of this university and request that you confer upon them the degrees for which they are now recommended. Graduates, this is the formal part. By virtue of the authority vested in me and the Senate of this university, I hereby admit you to your various and several degrees. Congratulations.
Please be seated. The members of the graduating class here in Convocation Mall will now be presented individually to the Chancellor, but, few, but first, a few requests for those of you who are in the Mall today. Family and friends, we welcome you to applaud, cheer, and share the joy that you have for your graduate as they cross the stage. But as a courtesy to others, please remain seated until the conclusion of the ceremony. Today is a day of celebration. Graduates, after you have crossed the stage, I invite, I invite the doctoral graduates to join the call at your colleagues on the platform. And to all other honored graduates, please return to your seats. And now, the moment we have all been waiting for, the degrees in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences will now be presented. Madam Chancellor, I invite Dean and Associate Provost Graduate and Postdoctoral Studies, Dr. Jeff Dirksen, to begin the presentation of those who have earned graduate degrees. Madam Chancellor, the graduates of the degree of Doctor Philosophy in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences will now be presented. I invite Dr. Peter Hall, Dean Pro Tem of the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences to join us. Dr. Shora Ebrahimi, supervised by Dr. Christoph Wolfesmann. That's a little out of order. It's actually the first doctoral degree recipient is Dr. Kelly Feeney, who you've just heard is the recipient of the Dean of Graduate Studies Convocation Medal for Academic Excellence. Dr. Feeney examined conversation strategies used in Hadkil, the language of Northern Haida peoples, in partnership with Elder Lawrence Bell, as she just told us. Finney received numerous awards, including two Community Trust Endowment Funds fellowships and several travel and minor research awards. She is continuing her work with Had Kill as a postdoctoral associate, part of the National Science Foundation grant awarded to Sea Alaska Heritage Institute. Madam Chancellor, the remaining graduates of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences will now be presented. Dr. Shora Ebrahimi, supervised by Dr. Christoph Wolfesmann. Dr. Alois Keith Sieben, supervised by Dr. Clint Burnham. Madam Chancellor, the graduates of master's degrees in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences will now be presented. Elise Hendrika Costa. <laughs> Carrie Ann Ellis. <laughs> Nicole Alessandra Flores.
Jacob Joseph Goldback. <laughs> Catherine Elora Hogg. <laughs> David Edward Kenny. <laughs> Amila Lee. Jeffrey Nilsson. Yasser Nazari. Sarah Elizabeth Danielle Penn. Samuel Fergus Willett. Chris Young Ook Young. Kayla Ashley. Claire Elise Buckley. Eric Hendrick Christensen. Christina Marie Coleman. Claire McLean Davies. Kara Jesse Fogliato. Miranda Robin Rainey Garipi. Francis Elizabeth Johnstone. Stella Wei Ying Quan. Christopher Mabry. Balraj Singh Matu. Erica June McAdam. Megan Delaney McKay. Miriam Aliska Ali Nasser. Olga Romanovna Nasinovskaya. Yulia Nevarova. Grace Heyun Park. Alexandra Taylor Patey. Sarah Van Barsen. Beverly Aoi Ling Chu. Leandro Da Silva Correa. Rebecca Lee Cutler. Amanda Marita Goodmanis. Nathan Andrew Korstangi. Camilla D'Souza Silva. Madam Chancellor, it's a particular honor now to acknowledge Brendan Barsht, a faculty of 
arts and social sciences graduate student who passed away and is being awarded his master's degree posthumously. Brandon's brother, Morrison March, Barch, is here today to cross the stage in honor of Brandon. Madam Chancellor, the students who have completed the requirements for graduate diplomas in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences will now be presented. Adaku and Ndaya Akogu. <laughs> Kiana Alayi. Isabella Ortiz Orozco. Ada Sabetti. Thank you, graduates. Madam Chancellor, I invite the Dean Pro Tem of the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, Dr. Peter Hall, to begin the presentation of students earning undergraduate degrees. Madam Chancellor, the graduates of the bachelor's degree in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences will now be presented. The first graduate, Ms. Sophie Dubishek, uh, is the recipient of the Dean's Convocation Medal for Academic Excellence. Sophia was a Gordon Shrum uh, major um, entrance scholar and completed two concurrent bachelor's degrees at SFU in just five years. She appeared on the President's Honor Roll for 10 consecutive semesters and received numerous awards including the O'Connell Prize in Children's Literature and the Chanel Dahl Award in English. Madam Chancellor, the remaining graduates of the bachelor's degree in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences will now be presented. Alexander Joseph Erikan. Abdulnasa Ayan Parast. <laughs> Alexandra Gabrielle Andrews. <laughs> Keisei Aoki. Muhammad Ibrahim Aziz. Tatsuya Azuma. Justin Eric Bermudez. Gayatri Aparna Bhagavatula. Annalise Marie Fraser Bichot. 
Leah Amanda Houston Boardman. Shayan Ahmed Bombal. Christian Ryan Briones. Kara Isabel Bulaki. Romanos Emmanuel Beliris. Wen Xuan Tsai. Zhu Rong Tsai. David Michael Cano. Lak Kwok Chow. Jade Wei Shun Chan. Prathana Chandok. Kayla Shujen Mendieta Chow. Tzho Chow. Lucas Antonio Chavez. Chow Xian Chen. Kun Yuan Chen. Lan Chen. <laughs> Tiffany Chen. <laughs> Wei Yu Chen. <laughs> Lan Chen. Zin Chen. Yilan Chen. Wing Zi Chen. Phoebe Chen. Brittany Cho. Destin Chow. Tyler Raymond Chrétien. Albert Chui. Zi Jing Dai. Samuel Darmawan. Maria Katerina DeAngelis. <laughs> Jessica De La Cruz. <laughs> Darby Vincent DeCola. <laughs> Bai An Dung. <laughs> Tian Yuan Do. Francesca Azalea Drake. <laughs> Jia Zheng Duan. Nastaran Ebizade Ered Musa. <laughs> Janelle Febiar Edadolan. <laughs> Katie Rachel Elsinga. <laughs> Arshia Esmaili. <laughs> I 
Isaac Evans. Hung Shu Fan. Aston Kok Yan Fong. Liam Charles Foster. Matthew Charles Froze. Justin Ramel Golimpin. Xu Gao. Zhe Wei Gao. Shuang Zhe Ge. Li Tao Gelletly. Larissa Maria Gerber. Amritpal Kaur Gog. Elizabeth Summer Jardin. Ethan Thomas Gibson. Vanessa Nicole Giles. Harman Singh Gill. Marcello Francisco Sanjay Gordillo Perez. Daniel Kieran Gowans. Mu Song Gu. Kirajit Singh Gulati. Su Yu Guo. Manav Gupta. Kaya Hama Werbs. Shui Ting Hao. Mahathir Hassan. Serenity Faith Paloma. Audrey Holly Ho. Kim Yi Ho. Emily Gwendolyn Ava Hoffman. Brandon Philip Hong. Hannah Elsie Hood. Jing Yi Ho. Bing Hu. Rong Hua Hu. Xi Huang. Noreen Nadim Ibrahim. Danielle Layla Ignis. Erwin J. Lazaga Inakala. Hao Yu Jiang. Vanchika Joshi. Samantha Patricia Haruko Kakuno. Nathan Daniel Cam. Sarah Nicole Karhukangas. Gratianus Theodatus Cavin. Coco Jane Kerbis. Man Hua Kung.
Muzna Amanullah Khan. Inderjit Jordan Singh Kara. Na Um Kim. Gabriella Clarissa. Chui Mei Kong. Brian Matthew Richard Kramer. Denny Kwong. Tanya Khan Kuriada. Sarah Kushnerik. Andy Kwan. Eunice Wing Lam Kwok. Ho Ming Kwok. Taylor Elizabeth Ann Lawrence. Joshua Matthew Lee. Wan Jun Lee. Brendan Alexander Lee. Fang Rui Li. Hao Ran Li. Jin Yan Li. Xiao Jun Li. Xue Li. Yan Chou Li. Emo Li. Zheng Li. Zi Qi Li. Jia Qi Liang. Si Qi Liang. Yan Yu Liao. Xiao Lin Lin. Yu Lin. Song Yu Liu. Pei Wen Liu. Wen Liu. Yu Liu. Yuan Qing Liu. Yue Xin Liu. Zi Jian Liu. Sienna Katrina Livich. Xiao Tong Lu. Yue Luan. Meng Zi Ma. Yu Hui Ma.
Sean Joseph McAdam. Duk Viet Mai. Hai Yi Mai. Minervina Young Mac. Sharon K. Malley. Sin Lam Jessica Mann. Pamela Isabel Manchego Menendez. Shiraz Manor. Callie Ray Matsumoto. Randy James McDonald. Amanda Catherine McRae. Shalv Mihir Mehta. Mung May. Kameo Molina. Emily Sylvia Mikola. Michael Evan Milosavlovic. Justine Moon Mock. Charlene Sin Yi Moy. Samir Mullick. <laughs> Kelly Lock Yu Ang. <laughs> Ching Lam Nan. <laughs> An Fuang Nguyen. Stephanie Dorothy Nguyen. <laughs> Shuo Yang Ni. Mark Lucas Nielsen. Hiroshi Nishizawa. Amandeep Kaur Nota. Keen Alexander Oates. He won O. Ijeoma Sophia Okafor. Dennis John Olmsted. Egemen Dogukan Ongan. Bora Otar. Sandra Pal. Hui Min Pan. Jerick Shing Wai Pan. Swetal Nimesh Patel. Jerry Pun. Pooh Pun. Jasmine Yi Shan Piao. Ting Chin. Joshua Ray. Megan Keeley Rockwell. Tommaso Paolo Emilio Saki. Priyashi Sri Saravanan Salam. 
Rachel Marie Sargent. Harlina Corsira. Mahip Singh Sekong. Maria Gabriela Seminario Cazorla. Yo Rin Sio. Paige Elizabeth Serer. Shaheem Ayman Shamsul Nizam. Jeffrey Victor Shi. Camilla Shelby. Tong Shen. Yu Cheng Shen. Yue Sheng. Nicole Sonia Shergill. Amit Singh Sidhu. Pei Wen Sima. Allegra Simeonato. Anjali Singh. Michelle Ann Smith. Hao Feng Su. Zi Hong Su. Ao Sun. Yu Chen Sun. Samantha McLean Sundby. Martin Cooper Suryati. Siddharth Tank. Natasha Sheena Tarr. Catherine Daisy Templeton Cropper. Caroline May Therian. Emily Irene Toth. Tyrus Blake Tracy. Dwey Bik Hung Tran. Ti Fung Hua Trin. Matthew Tobias Vic Tucker. Muhammad Usman. Gregorius Davalin Utomo. Shingirai Sean Vambe. Ti Tan Na Vo. Juliana Grace Wagger. Bing Yan Wan. Ben Wong. Hao Jung Wang. Jia Chun Wang. Meng Jia Wang. Wei Wei Wang. Wei Yu Wang. Yi Jun Wang. Well 
Zhi Wei Wang. Zheng Wei Wang. Tennille Williams. Adam Witten. Kendra Alyssa Wong. Shu Fan Wong. Trenton Heitzun Wong. Vincent Wong. Yunar Ashley Wong. Wei Wu. Wei Chi Wu. Zi Tao Jaden Wu. Shen Zhou. Tian Yu Xing. Jia Xin Xu. Tang Xu. Zi Nuo Xu. Wei Jie Yan. Zi Wen Yan. Ming Yu Yang. Yi Fan Yang. Zi Yi Yang. Bai Jun Ye. Si Yun Zhen. Jia Qi Zhang. Jing Lun Zhang. Shuang Zhang. Yu Hao Zhang. Zhi Ruo Zhang. Zhong Yu Zhang. Jennifer Chan Chan Zhao. Qing Lai Zhao. Si Qian Zhao. Yu Xiang Zhao. Bao Qing Yuan Zhang. Chu Wu Zhang. Zi Heng Zhou. Ying Ju Yu Shi Zhou Madam Chancellor, the students who have completed the requirements for certificates in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences will now be presented.
Cheyenne Cassandra Lee Cunningham. Francis Donovan James. Lily Allison Sierra Tier Cunningham. Will the graduating class please rise if you are able? I am so honored that you're here today and I congratulate each and every one of you. The completion of a degree is an impressive achievement and I encourage your friends and family to communicate their hearty congratulations to you by whatever means they would like. For those online and in the mall and members of the platform party, please join me in applauding the June 2022 graduates. And now I invite you, the members of the graduating class, to reciprocate by applauding your family, friends, faculty and staff, and all of those who have helped you reach this goal. Graduates, please be seated. Friends, this completes the formal awarding of degrees. Some graduates recommended by the Senate for degrees today are unable to be here present in convocation, and their names have therefore not been read out. I now admit them to the appropriate degrees as shown in the program. Before we depart, I have several thank yous to express. To all of you here and online, of course, our hearty thanks for joining us. It's a special time to welcome graduates and their families to Convocation Mall. And to the many staff, volunteers, faculty members who have worked together to run a celebratory, smooth Convocation Day, as you know, an event like this doesn't take place without many, many volunteers. Please join me in thanking all the volunteers who made this possible. Honored graduates, family and friends, you're now invited to attend your faculty and alumni celebration reception up near the AQ pond. And judging by the smells wafting earlier, I would invite you to get there early. We look forward to continuing this celebration. This brings to a formal close the part of this morning's convocation. Please rise if you are able and remain standing at your places as the platform party recesses and the head usher announces you may exit. Thank you all for joining us. Good day.
Congratulations once again to today's graduates. Our ceremony has now come to a close. For the safety of all in attendance and to reduce crowding, we will exit Convocation Mall, beginning with the graduates at the front of the mall and our guests seated at the back of the mall, followed by those in the center of the mall. Please follow the direction of the ushers and respect the personal space of others as you exit. Graduates at the front and guests in the back, please proceed with exiting now. Thank you once again for your cooperation and for attending today's ceremony.